And welcome everybody to this week's edition of the Life and Legacy Show. My name is Tim Seckler. I am the owner, operator, and founder of the Seckler Law Firm, where great families make great plans. My law firm is dedicated solely to doing estate planning like wills and trusts and powers of attorney. We do post-death administration work. If you've lost a loved one, um, you'll know that there's a whole lot of paperwork and, and sometimes some court proceedings that need to take place afterwards. So we do that work. And we do what we call nursing home crisis planning, which if uh, if you have never been in the situation, a nursing home uh, or any really long-term care issue is an extremely expensive venture. In Pennsylvania, nursing homes cost six figures a year, and a lot of families cannot hack those kind of bills. And so we help families protect assets, become eligible for public benefits, and uh, and allow their spouses and their families to have uh, to have either a retirement or a legacy, whatever the case is. And so. Those are really the cases we do. We don't do traffic tickets. We don't do divorces. If you're looking to learn about divorces, you are listening to the wrong uh, radio show. Uh, here we talk about uh, some smart ideas, some things that maybe you should do to protect yourself, protect your family, protect your finances. Uh, and, uh, and usually that evolves into, uh, involves estate planning uh, documents like wills and trusts, et cetera. If you haven't uh, uh, tuned into the show, sometimes here we do things uh, that are sort of technical in nature. I talk about uh, some of the, the technical aspects of the, of the documents we use and whatnot. You can find those in our past episodes. Uh, this show is aired on the radio, of course, if you're listening to 101.5 Word FM in Pittsburgh. Uh, we're here each and every Saturday morning bringing you what I think to be some pretty interesting content. If you've missed the old episodes, uh, you can find them on uh, your on your Apple device or on your other uh, device uh, and just search for the Life and Legacy course. And you ought to be able to find us as a podcast on your uh, on your smart device. So, uh, quick plug for the law firm, secularlawfirm.com, S-E-C-H-L-E-R lawfirm.com. If you have some questions around any of this stuff, you can always give us a call at 724 841 one three nine three, and what I'm going to talk about today is sort of some current events. You know, I read the headlines like I think most other people do. <clears throat> and this week, there's been a whole lot of headlines, most of them political, which I really prefer not to get into uh, on today's show um, because I don't want to get angry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just angry at the whole system right now. I, I think the whole system is failing us. I don't care if you're red, blue, left, right, doesn't matter. The whole thing isn't working right now. Uh, but let's put that aside. The other thing that has has been in the news that oddly has sort of piqued my interest because I really don't read about celebrities is a couple of things that came out in the last week or so about a couple of celebrities. And, and I think it's really relevant to some of the conversations we've been having on this show. Uh, and and I was joking with my wife before the show. And if you've listened to it before, you've, you've met my wife on the show. She comes on and talks uh, on occasion. Um, but the... Um, but I told her I was going to try to do this this evening, and she told me I was nuts, and maybe I am. The uh, So what the show is going to be about is what do Britney Spears and Marty Schottenheimer have in common? And I imagine pretty much everybody knows who Britney Spears is. If you're not uh, a sports fan, you may not know who Marty Schottenheimer is. Marty uh, is a Pittsburgh native. He's He's from Cannonsburg, played football at Pitt. Went on and had a couple of years in the NFL, but really he's best known for being an NFL coach. He coached all over the league. Uh, he has over 200 wins in the NFL, and he was coaching when I was in, like, my childhood and teenage years. You know, he, he was a coach for all these teams that used to beat up on the teams that I rooted for. I didn't grow up as a Pittsburgh native, and I didn't root for the Steelers until I got here. Uh, I used to root for the Washington Redskins when they were the Washington Redskins. And, you know, we didn't have many winning seasons there. So if you look, I, I was doing some homework on Marty Schottenheimer uh, before the episode here. And you, you look over his things. I mean, he had a winning record, 44-27 and 27 in Cleveland from 1984. Cleveland, winning record in Cleveland. It was probably the last time they had a winning record before this past year. Uh, kicked butt at Kansas City, 101 wins to 58 losses. And then he, he came to uh, coach my Washington Redskins at the time and, and of course, only won 8-8 eight and eight because that's what it's like there. Um, but, uh, but then he went on to win a whole bunch of games in, in San Diego. Um, 200 career wins. And I tell you what, if you, ever, if you ever, like I did some homework for this and was just sort of Googling about them. Uh, and uh, if you ever need some motivation for whatever you do or just in life general, you know, professional, being a good parent, being whatever it is that you're up to, 
go on Google and find some videos on Marty Schottenheimer's locker room speeches or his pregame speeches. It's it's fantastic stuff. I I, I screwed around on on uh, YouTube for a couple of I don't know a couple of minutes this afternoon, just looking at these videos of of some of the things that he would do to motivate his guys and and get the team off and playing well and all the rest. And and it's really worth doing. Um, but uh, but we lost Marty Schottenheimer this week. So the the Pittsburgh native turned NFL superstar coach uh, lost his battle this week to Alzheimer's disease. And, you know, it, it's just a shame because if you, if you look at some of the comments that his players had or that other coaches had about him, he was, he was a workaholic. He, you know, there's a quote that, that I came across from, from another coach that you couldn't outwork him, you couldn't outsmart him. Um, and so here's a guy who had a very analytical job, very analytical career, you know, NFL coach. These guys worked their tails off. Uh, seven days a week, watching film, thinking about game plans, coaching people, training people, putting together the plan, going to practice, going to the game, dealing with the press, all of the things that an NFL coach has to do and just, you know, wired for go, right? Uh, and, and for a gentleman like that uh, to eventually get Alzheimer's disease and and end up losing losing your mental capacity and, and end up losing your life uh, to, to a terrible affliction like Alzheimer's disease. It's just, man, it's just a heartbreaker. You know, I, I, I call I call dementia and Alzheimer's disease the great taker, right? It, it's a taker because it takes from you. It takes your memories. It takes your cognition. It takes your thinking process. But it takes other stuff. You know, it takes your relationships. It takes your your happiness. It takes your finances. You know, long-term care is expensive um, and and all it does is it takes and 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 it finally it takes your life and I, uh, I I've, I've as an elder law attorney you might imagine I deal with quite a few folks who have the dementia uh, Alzheimer's disease or another dementia and you know you see these stories and it's been real personal for me I've had three of my four grandparents have dementia uh, when they were living and, and uh, we've done our fair share of nursing home battles and a fair share of my clients have dementia and, and we're working hard to try to help them out. Uh, but you just see a story like this and it's just, it, to me, it, it's it's just a, a gut-wrenching story. Um, so uh, God bless Marty Schottenheimer. He did a lot of good things. He, he trained a lot of good people. If you listen to the things that his, his former players, you know, he, he was Drew Brees' first coach. Uh, it, Drew Brees, I forgot this. Drew Brees started his NFL career with the, uh, with the San Diego Chargers. And, and Marty Schottenheimer was his coach there. And he was his guy and he got him off on the right foot. And now, you know, we got Drew Brees, one of the best quarterbacks in the, uh, that's ever played the game, shooing for the Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, hopefully Marty Schottenheimer makes it there as well. But so that sh that occurred this week. But then the, you know the other the other story that came up this week that I, I really can't ignore from the legal standpoint. Like I, I'm really interested in what's going on here is Britney Spears. Now I'm not a Britney Spears fan. Uh, you know I, I don't listen to her music. I never really did listen to her music. You know she and I are roughly the same age. So just like every other guy my age, at one point in time, I was probably in love with Britney Spears, uh, but not her music. <laughs> um, but there's a really interesting legal battle going on with regard to her mental faculties and her ability to manage her own affairs. And so what's going on with her? There's, this has all come to light, apparently, because there's a new documentary out about Britney Spears and, and, and some of the, the challenges that she's had throughout her life. And, and in full disclosure, I haven't seen the movie. I don't know if I will see the movie, um, but uh, I, every time I, I checked a headline, Britney Spears was in it this week. So I, I started clicking around and here's what's going on with her. So, so of course, you know, as a young child, I think at 11, she started being in the public spotlight with the Disney stuff and then the music stuff. And then, you know, she, so, so, you know, just a unique situation where she's in this public spotlight her entire life and dealing with crazy amounts of money and fame and publicity and people following her and, and all of the rest, right? So you have to wonder, and, and you look at these, these child stars and, and so many of them end up having emotional problems or drug problems or drinking problems or whatever it is. And, and there's no wonder why you're putting too much stress on young people 
that are just ill-equipped to manage it, right? So she had her own issues. I can't, I can't detail them for you here. I don't really know them, but I know she had some issues to at some point in time, uh, in, in what was it? I think 2008, um, she had some sort of a, like a mental breakdown, right? And, um, and so around that time, she got herself in, involved in this legal process called conservatorship. Now, we don't call it conservatorship in Pennsylvania. She is a, uh, she's, this is in California, which, you know, th this to me is bonkers. I'm not sure that the court system would work the way that it did in California if she were, say, a Pennsylvania resident. I'm not sure that, that this would fly. But a conservatorship or what we might call like a guardianship in Pennsylvania is essentially you lose your own ability legally to manage your own affairs. So let's take a more common example is um, a senior with dementia that never did a power of attorney document or never did any planning to deal with uh, what happens if I have a stroke or what happens if I, you know, if I, if today I'm making my own decisions and I'm in control mm -hmm. of my own sort of financial and legal uh, decision making. And, uh, and then I have a massive stroke or I'm in an accident and I have a head injury or, or, you know, but for whatever reason, tomorrow I can't make decisions and my family wants to help me make my decisions. <clears throat> then if we haven't done any other planning, the courts would dictate that we have to go through guardianship. I have to be declared essentially legally incapacitated. So I'm not allowed to make decisions for myself anymore. And then they might appoint my spouse or my sibling or my father or, or someone close to me or professional to be my guardian. Now that person's got the pen to the checkbook and they get to decide what's best for me. And this happens a lot with people with heavy disabilities, uh, um, intellectual challenges, uh, dementia, strokes, you name it, where people cannot make their own decisions then you could end up with something called a guardianship. And that's essentially what happened with Brittany. Brittany, in, I, I, like I said, I think it was 2008, um, after a, some sort of a public breakdown in 2007, ends up with this temporary and then permanent, what they call a conservatorship in California, which essentially a judge put an attorney and her father in charge of her money. But, but here's the thing. Britney Spears never had a stroke. Britney Spears never had dementia. Britney Spears may, may have made bad decisions. Um, she may still make bad decisions for all I know, but I don't, I don't think so, right? Um, she may have maturity issues. I don't really know. She may, have, she may make bad decisions. I don't really know. But here's the thing. She's not 11 anymore. Britney Spears is 39 years old. She's a grown woman. This is her money. She, she worked, you know, they put her on the stage. They made her do all of this stuff for 25 years or however long and now 12 years later 13 years later she's still involved in this conservatorship meaning her dad is still in charge of her money he's still in charge of her life and, and i read through some of the articles that have come out in the last week and he does things to interrupt her her romantic life uh her her boyfriend has some comments and i don't really want to get into the he said, she said stuff. But I just find it really interesting that we have this situation where she must have made some bad decisions or she must have had a real breakdown to where somebody, a judge, thought, nope, she can't handle her own money anymore. We're essentially going to take away her legal rights to manage her own millions and millions of dollars and we're going to put her dad in charge. Now, I don't know if her dad's a good money manager. I'm sure that the judge is paying attention to all of that, I hope. But the point is... She's making bad decisions, but I mean, well, it is California, but this is still the United States, right? I mean, you still, like, I still have my own freedom. Like if I were rich, if I were an extremely wealthy person, if I were sitting on piles of money and I were making bad decisions, I were blowing it on bad investments. I were buying stupid, expensive cars, right? Whose business is that? Why can't I do that? Who's to say I cannot make bad decisions? I'm allowed to make bad decisions. I hope I don't make bad decisions. But aren't I, as a, as a citizen of a free country, allowed to make bad decisions? And, and no, so, so it, she's in the situation, and now she's fighting. She was in court in you know 2020 and up until as recently, I think, is November, and she's going back in next week trying to get her dad off of 
the control issue, trying to get her dad away from being the person who's managing all of her money. Isn't it like, I hope you're listening to this and, and finding it interesting because I, I find it fascinating. She has quotes out there that she's afraid of the guy. She's afraid of the guy. And he is the person that they put in charge of her money. We can't, we, we can't put a bank in charge of her money. If, if we decide that she's a harm to herself and to others or whatever, and, and you know, if you, if you have to make the decision that somebody else is in control of her money, how about the guy who put her on a stage when she was 11 year old, contributed heavily to the fact that she had mental breakdown later, and now she's afraid of the guy, that's the guy we're gonna put in charge of her money? It just, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. Now listen, in my estate plans, I do planning for underage people all the time. Okay, we do that. That's a common thing, right? So like the question to the client is, okay, you've got little kids or, or you've got grandkids who may inherit it. If, if they would inherit at 11 years old or 12, year old, 12 years old, um, then we don't let 12 year olds manage money. They don't have legal capacity. You don't have your own legal capacity until you're 18 years old. So we need guardianship for underage people. We might use trust for underage people. Those trusts, when we do trust for underage people, we usually put somebody in charge of the money until 25 years old, but they have an end date, right? Because at some point in time, the, the young person is not a young person anymore and they're allowed to be in charge of their money, okay? So I get, I mean, and it's that's just good planning, right? I get that. And so we do that all the time for people and you should do that. You should have underage trust in your plan. And so I understand about lack of maturity and if I'm planning with my money for my youngster, my young kid, and I pass away and I'm leaving life insurance for my young guy, I'm gonna put somebody in charge of the money until 25 years old. But you know what the difference is? In that case, that's, that's my money. And I'm saying with my money, when I give it to someone else, a third party, it should be managed in trust until somebody says, or until a certain age where they're mature enough to handle it, right? But that's me giving them money. The difference here is, this is Britney Spears' money. It's not her dad's money. He, who is to, he to say that she can't manage her money? Like if my dad walked in the house right now, I love my dad to death, he would never do anything like this, but if he, if he walked through my house right now and said, Tim, I don't think you should manage your money anymore, give me your checkbook, I would say, get out of my house, right? But they're not letting Britney Spears say that. And, and, and so, you know, I just find it completely interesting. So here comes the big question that I'm, I'm trying to tie together is, what do these two stories from this past week in the news, what do they have together? What do they have in common? What do Marty Schottenheimer and Britney Spears have in common? And at first glance, nothing, right? I mean, he's the tough as nails, former NFL football player, NFL coach. If you listen to some of his, uh, some of his pregame speeches, which are, in my opinion, really inspiring and all the rest, but he uses some words I can't use on 101.5 on Saturday mornings, right? He's a tough guy. What does he have in common with Britney Spears? You know, like looking at the two people, you couldn't have, you couldn't have less in common. Here's what they have in common. These are both situations where they lost control. When I talk to my clients about estate planning. And if you're one of my clients, or if you've seen any of my workshops or the videos we have on our website, the very first point I make to you is what estate planning is really all about, is managing control and access at different periods of time, okay? Control and access. That's really all it was. People ask me if I want a will or a trust, I don't know. But these are tools that we use to manage control and access. So tonight I'm alive and well. I've got control, I've got access to my own stuff, I can make my own decisions. But if I hit my head off of the dashboard tomorrow and I'm incapacitated, I cannot make decisions anymore. Now I've lost control and we need to plan for that. So the normal way you plan for that is a document called a power of attorney, right? So I could name my spouse or I could name my dad or I could name my, you know, my adult child or brother, I could name someone to be my financial power of attorney. And if I lose control and I'm incapacitated, that person takes over, right? And I bet you, I bet you whatever I've got sitting around on the desk right here, that Marty Schottenheimer had a power of attorney, right? So at some point in time, the Alzheimer's disease would have taken over. He's got a power of attorney. His family members more than likely are the people that got to make the decisions uh, when he couldn't anymore. And then they, uh, and then they would have probably made the decisions in his best interest. You're not hearing a dramatic story 
out of the family that something went wrong with the management of the money or any of that. That's not the point. The point is, my guess is, he probably planned for the, li the loss of control, okay? Alzheimer's is the great taker. Alzheimer's took his cognition. Alzheimer's took control, but legally the, the control shifted to another person, at least I would guess. Britney Spears didn't. She didn't plan. She lost control, not to Alzheimer's disease, maybe to mental disease. I don't, again, I don't really know. But I think what really she lost control to was what at least looks to me to be a, a pretty screwed up government system that said, listen, adult woman with money, you're not allowed to have that money anymore. We're not allowed to make the decisions with that money anymore. We, we think we know better than you do. Now, there might have been a time where she was having like a really mental breakdown and, and it required hospitalization and other things, right? So like, I, I again, in full disclosure, I don't really know all the facts. But I find it really interesting that now you've got somebody who, you know, the reports are purportedly is not what, what you would consider to be somebody with mental deficiencies. Is it may act kind of crazy by like conservative Western Pennsylvania standards or whatever. But she's still a U.S. citizen with her mental faculties. I don't know that I don't know. Uh, that uh, that around here somebody would say no, we got to take away her rights. I mean, look what what happens if they say I'm crazy, right? Uh, what if I don't think I'm crazy? What if I don't think they, the judge should put my dad in charge? Right? You're saying I don't get a vote? And, and there's something that really kind of rubs me the wrong way about this story. But she is not in control right now. Her dad's in control. The lawyers are in control. The judge is in control. But she's not in control. Uh, and and you just you just look at a situation like that, and you, you just wonder how how did we get here? How how does that happen? How is he still? If she had a mental breakdown in two thousand and seven, but I think since two thousand and seven she's put out songs, and I think she's done tours, and I think she's done all kind of things. So it doesn't appear that she's mentally infirm. Well, then why can't she have her money back? You know, and and so it, it's just really interesting. I guess I'll get done talking about Britney Spears, but I, the point that I'm trying to get to you, the listener, is there are situations in which you could lose control. You could lose control. You could have an illness, you could have a death, you could have an accident, uh, and, and there are ways you lose control over your money. So the question then is recognizing at some point in time I will lose control because at some point in time I'm going to pass away, which means, you know, I can't make decisions anymore. Who's going to make the decisions? And have I told them what to do? And do they know what to do? And, and are the documents in good place? Do we use a will and name an executor? Do we need, use a trust and name a trustee? And what other things are we trying to accomplish? Well, remember, it's about control and access. Right? Britney Spears lost control. I imagine she still has some access, right? I, I, she's not living in the gutter, but somebody else is writing the checks, right? So limited access in that situation. Who else could have access? Well, in an Alzheimer's case, like Mr. Schottenheimer, it could be long-term care expenses. Now, I suspect he was pretty wealthy by the end of the NFL career, and, and hopefully he had great care in his home and, and everything went well for him. But for more middle-class folks, you know, we, you know, it could be a nursing home, it could be different things. That's expensive care. And if you end up in a nursing home, the nursing home costs over $10,000 a month, and people go broke. Right. So who's got access there? The long term care health system has access to your stuff. And so we can use we can use documents like like trusts to manage access, to manage control, to protect dollars from the would be wolves of the world, the creditors, the court system, the the, the long term care issues. You can use documents like wills and trusts to regulate control and access. The question that you should be asking yourself is, one, have you done any of this? And two, is there anything you should be doing? Or is there anything that you should add to your plan or do a plan in the first place to manage the control and access? And how would you know? So you gotta become educated. So what we do at the secular law firm, the way that we handle this is, you know, we, we consider ourselves to be an education first firm, is we do in-person workshops, we do uh, the online life and legacy course, and we've been doing live webinars. And you can find out all of that information at secklerlawfirm.com, S-E-C-H-L-E-R, lawfirm.com, you should check out uh, one of our workshops or take the online course 
that walks you through all these different documents. And at the end of the course, we offer you a free Zoom consultation. You don't have to take a day off of work to have a conversation with us. We'll just hop on Zoom quick and then we'll help you figure out if it's the right plan. Do you need a will? Do you need a trust? Whatever the case is. Okay, so estate planning has never been easier. Check out all of our resources at secklerlawfirm.com, S-E-C-H-L-E-R, lawfirm.com. Come to one of our workshops or check out the online content. You won't regret it. I thank you for listening to the show today, uh, and I'll check you out here again next week.